In this video, we'll add our shipping form to our user info section of our e-commerce website with Django and Python. Hey guys, John Alder here from Codemy.com, and in the last video, we added a shipping form model to our e-commerce app with Django. In this video, we want to add that form to the user info section so a user can log in and update their shipping info if they want. We're going to use some of the things we used back at the beginning of this playlist when we set up the user info section, so it shouldn't be that difficult to knock this out. And that's what we're going to look at in this video. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the Sublime Text Editor in the Git Bash Terminal, as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Django e-commerce series. So check that out if you haven't so far. And before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. It's all my courses, videos, and books for one-time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, so in the last video, we created this payment app, and inside of it, we created a model for our shipping address. And at the time, I was going to sort of create a separate page where a user could update their shipping info, and I thought, ah, that's silly. This should all be on the same page. So if we head back over to the website and log in and go to our profile user info, we already have this section where they can update their basic info. We should just have on this page another set of boxes and stuff where they can update their shipping address. So uh, since we're going to do that, a lot of these fields are named the same as these, like email, address one, city, state, et cetera. So we need to change these real quick. So I'm just going to say uh, shipping underscore full. So I'm just going to put a shipping under or around each of these, right? So now it's, you know, shipping underscore country, shipping underscore zip code, as opposed to if we go back to our store app and look at our models.py address one, address two, city, state. So we don't want these to be the same as these since they're all gonna be on the same page. So go ahead and make that change, save this. We need to migrate this into the server real quick. So head back over to the terminal. I'm in my C slash ecom slash ecom directory. My virtual environment is turned on and let's go Python, manage.py, make migrations. And it's gonna ask us a bunch of questions here. It says, oh, was this field changed to shipping address underscore? Yes, 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 yes. All the fields were changed. So, okay, so it's made a migration. Now we need to push that. So let's go Python manage.py migrate. Okay, that looks good. And then let's just run our server again. So, pan it, so Python manage.py run server. Okay, so now we've got this all set up. We need a form. So let's head over to our payment app and you'll notice there is no forms.py file by default. So we have to create one. So let's right click on payment and create a new file. And let's just go ahead and file save as forms.py. And so here up the top, we need to, from Django, we need to import our forms. We also need from dot models, we wanna import that shipping address. Okay, so let's go ahead and create a class and let's call this the shipping form. And this is the form that's gonna appear on the website, right? So this is gonna inherit forms dot model form and inside of here let's go back to our models.py file for our shipping stuff we just need all of these fields so i'm going to copy these and paste them in just so we can reference them let's go back to our original forms.py file in our store directory and let's just copy one of these because all of this stuff is going to be pretty much the same so let's just paste all this in uh we want these to be required uh, yes, let's put this as true, except for two of them. Remember, remember in the last video, we had like state and zip code wasn't required. So we'll change it for those. Uh, but okay, that looks good. Now, instead of phone, this is going to be shipping underscore whatever. So full name, for instance. So I'm just going to leave it like this. And I think we need seven of these. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, that kind of made me a little dizzy. <laughs> All right. Okay, so this one will be shipping underscore full underscore name. This one will be shipping underscore email. This one will be shipping underscore address one, and then address two, and then finally city, state, and zip code. And those things, full name, email address, etc., I got from right here, these things, right? That's why I pasted those just so we can I look at them really quickly. Oh, and we also need country uh, zip code. And let's do one more. Instead of zip code, this is going to be country. 
Okay, so we can get rid of that stuff now. Now we also need to change the placeholder. So this is gonna be full name. This one is going to be email address. This one is going to be address one and address two, and then city, state, zip code, and country. Now, let's see, the state and the zip code for these, we're gonna have them as false, they're not required. Because remember, in our models.py file, for state and zip code, we allow them to be null and blank. So we don't need to require those two. So, okay, that looks good. And all this form control stuff, that's all bootstrapped to make it the, the form fields look nice on the screen and we're good to go. So we also need now a class meta and we need to define a few things. First, what model are we using? Well, we're using the shipping address model that we imported up here at the top, right? Now we also need to tell this exactly what fields we wanna use. So this is gonna be shipping underscore, let me just copy this. Shipping underscore full underscore name. And each of these are separated by a comma. So shipping underscore email, comma shipping underscore address one. <laughs> That's a little tedious, shipping underscore address two shipping underscore city, shipping underscore state, shipping underscore zip code, and shipping underscore country. All right, now we also wanna exclude a certain field. Any ideas what? So let's go exclude equals, and here we wanna exclude user, because remember, in our models.py file, when we created this in the last video, we have this user field, with, which is a foreign key, which links this stuff back to our user. So we don't want that user to be in the form, right? I mean, we're gonna access that user. Let's see, where'd we go? Uh, but we don't want the user information to pop up on the form. Now, you also need a comma here. I'm never really sure exactly why, but let's go ahead and put that. So, okay, go ahead and save this page. That looks good. Now, let's head over to our views.py file in our store directory, All right? And if we go back to the website real quick, we wanna play around with this update info page, right? When we go to our profile user info, that goes up to this update info page. So let's pull that up real quick, just to take a look at it. That's gonna be in our template, templates slash update info.html. And I'm gonna come Let's see, right above this form, and I'm gonna put in, let's say, billing information. And a couple of line breaks for fun. <laughs> All right. Save this, head back over here, and hit reload. Okay, so now it says billing information, and we'll call this stuff the billing information, which we'll flesh out later on. And now we've got this form with our CSRFF token, with our CSRF token and the form as P. And then let's go ahead and put in another form. Let's call this the shipping underscore form dot as underscore P. So, okay, we've got this shipping form. Now we need to add it to our views.py file. So save that, head back over to our views.py file in our store directory here. So let's see, there we go. And let's look for that update info function. And there it is right there. Now, let's see. We are passing right here. We're passing the form, colon form. That's the old form. We also now want to pass the shipping form, comma, shipping form. Now, we don't have this yet, so we're going to have to add it. So let's come up here to the very top, and we need to import some things. So right here, we're importing our forms. That's from this directory. This is our original forms.py file. We also need from payment dot forms payment is our payment app forms inside of our payment app is that forms.py file we just created right uh, so from payment dot forms we want to import our shipping form and that's shipping form because in our let's see forms.py file we named it shipping form right there right 
So, okay, we want to import that. We also need our model. So let's go from payment.models. We want to import our shipping address model. And let me just sort of put these apart so we can kind of look at them. And that is our payment.models shipping address model, right? So we're importing both of those things. Now inside of this update user function, we want to reference both of them. So first, we're checking to see if the user is logged in because we only want them to be able to update stuff if they're logged in. And if they are logged in, we're getting the current user and their profile. But we also, let's get the shipping underscore user. And this is going to be our shipping address dot get dot objects dot get. And we want to get the shipping address for the ID of our request dot user dot ID. So here, maybe let's comment get current user and here let's comment get current users shipping info now you may be asking yourself why did we break this off into its own model why didn't we just go to our original models.py file let's see in our store directory where is that at uh, there it is and just add some more fields we could have done that and you know that might have been easier but there are maybe reasons why we want to break these apart one, I don't know, users want to save this stuff logged in. People that aren't logged in that are just guests maybe don't want to. A bunch of different reasons why. Mostly it's just because it's kind of fun and <laughs> we're learning something new by doing this. So, okay, so we're going to get the shipping user. Now we've got our form defined. So get original user form. We also now want to get users shipping form, right? And that's the form we just created in that form.py file. So to get that, remember down here, we're calling this shipping form, right? So let's go ahead and define that right here. So let's go shipping form equals, and this is gonna be our shipping form, right? Now we wanna pass in request.post or none. And we want to set the instance to this shipping user that we just defined. All right. There we go. So that should do the trick. Let's go ahead and save this. Head back over to the website and hit reload and see how badly we messed this up. Oh, we definitely did. All right. So let's see. Uh, unknown fields, shipping emails. All right. Uh, um, let's go to our forms.py file, shipping email. Oh, right here, I called it shipping emails. Uh, that was weird. All right, now let's go ahead and hit reload. What else? Okay, another problem. Let's see, hit over the terminal. Uh, oh, it's still hung up on that. Let's just break out of here and run the server again. Okay, now I come back. All right, now that works. So, okay, this is billing address here. And there's our stuff that looks like it's correct. Let's also real quick here, head back over here to our update info page. And right above this guy, let's put a strong and let's say shipping information. And a couple of line breaks. As some of you have pointed out in the comments, I am crazy about line breaks. <laughs> it's just laziness. All right, hit reload. All right, that looks a little better. So, okay, moment of truth. Let's change this around. Let's change this to 15 West Elm. The original is 10 West Elm. So, oh, you know what? We haven't actually saved any of this stuff yet. So we have to make this functional. So let's head over to our views.py file. I thought we were missing something. <laughs> so, okay, we have this, if form is valid, then we wanna save the form and then flash up a message that says, hey, everything's been saved, right? Let's build this out a little bit Let's go if form dot is underscore valid or shipping underscore form dot is underscore valid. If either of those are, then we want to save our form and let's go uh, shipping dot shipping underscore form dot save. Here, let's save original form and here, let's save shipping form. All right, a little sloppy, but should get the job done. So now let's head back over here. 
and we change this to 15. It was 10. Let's update this. Okay, your info has been updated. Send us back to the homepage as we want. If we go back here, this still says 10. This says 15. All right, that seems to be good. Let's go ahead and make sure. Let's go to localhost uh, colon 5,000, 8,000. Let's check the admin section real quick. Click on this. Here's our shipping address. And sure enough, it is 15 West Elm now. If we come back here and change this to apartment 1805, just to make sure info has been updated. Now it says 1805. This one doesn't even have an address to. If we hit reload, 1805. Okay, so that definitely looks like it works. Let's try and change something up here. Let's change it to 10 West Elms in our billing info. So let's update that. Go back. Sure enough, it still says 10 West Elms. Down here, it does not say Elms. So these two forms aren't conflicting. Very good. Now here, let's try and take out Chicago. Let's leave it blank. We click this. Uh-oh, it says, please fill out this field. All right, so that is what we want. Um, we said though that we don't necessarily need a state. So let's take the state out and try it. Oh, it worked. So that's what we want also. We made that field not required, right? Oh, and again, that looks good. Moving right along, we now have a billing section and a shipping section. Uh, we might want to have a little box that says click this to make them the same. We could maybe look at that. This video is getting a little bit long. So I think we'll stop it right here. Maybe we'll look at that in the next video or so. Uh, it's kind of trivial. Just use a little JavaScript probably. And uh, eh, that's all there is to it. All right, a couple of quick things here. I noticed when I finished this, uh, we probably want to change this around a little bit. So when we're picking our current user and our shipping user, for our shipping user, we're just setting this to the ID of the person. But you remember we had the same problem with our profile since we've been doing this sort of piecemeal. If we create users, their ID numbers might not be synced up and probably won't. So instead of setting this to the ID, let's use the user ID of this. So let's go user underscore underscore ID. And I think that will work better. So make that little change there. And also I got to thinking about our models.py file. We have address one and address two. A lot of people aren't going to have an address two. So let's also set this to null equals true and blank equals true. Go ahead and save this. Now this is not a major change to the model, so we don't have to make a migration. This will just work like this. But now these two fields will no longer be necessary. And if we go back to our forms.py uh, and we come to the end of here, uh, let's give this required of false for address two on here. And I'll go ahead and save that. And if we now head back to, for instance, the admin area and look at our shipping address, shipping address two is no longer bold. So it's no longer required because, you know, people don't often have an address two if they live in a house, if they don't live in an apartment or something, they're not going to have an address two. So I, that was just a doy. We should probably fix that. Okay. So make those quick two changes. That should work. So that's all for this video. If you liked, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off lifetime membership. So that's access to all my courses, over 60 courses, thousands of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 190,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com and I'll see you in the next video.